In October 1999, Sangharachta went to Berlin to attend the annual conference of the German Buddhist Union, as well as visit the FWBO center there. The conference was attended by over 40 Buddhist groups, many of them from Berlin itself. With a population of three and a half million, Berlin has a very lively Buddhist scene, with most of the Buddhist groups coming under the umbrella of the German Buddhist Union. In turn, the GBU helps promote cooperation and harmony. During a full program of events, Sangharachta both gave talks at the Congress and the Buddhist Center and contributed to a panel discussion. I think that in the coming decades at least, and perhaps after that, there are a number of contemporary trends and influences and forces with which Buddhism will have to take issue, uh, which Buddhism will have to, to challenge. And the first of these is what, I don't know what you call it here in Germany, but in England we call it consumerism. Hmm? The, the belief, you know, whether expressed or only implied, that man lives to consume. Hmm? Shop till you drop. Hmm? <laughs> I think Buddhism has a lot to say of relevance in this particular area, because Buddhism in all its forms stresses simplicity of life, simplicity of lifestyle, not multiplying your wants, cutting down your, your wants, sharing with those who have less than you have. So I think this, this trend of consumerism is, is something that really needs to be combated in the name of Buddhist principles, and we have to find some way of doing that. And then another, another rather deadly Mara, beginning with a C, the compensation culture. That if something goes wrong, you blame somebody, huh? some other individual, or you blame some organization, government, a corporation, and you try to extract monetary compensation. Hmm? So you see yourself as a sort of victim, huh? oppressed in various ways, suffering in various ways, and seeking, demanding, through legal and other means, monetary compensation. I think this is a growing trend. It's a, a, a very, very powerful trend I know in the States today, and it's beginning to invade Britain, I'm sorry to say. I don't know what the situation is like here in Germany. But in many parts of the world, compensation culture is something that in the name of Buddhist principles, we really do need to combat. I attended the Congress of the European Buddhist Union here in Berlin some seven years ago, and I'd very much appreciated that experience. So I was uh, happy to accept the German Buddhist uh, Union's invitation this time, especially, of course, as we now have our own center here. So I thought I could combine, you know, speaking at the Congress of the German Buddhist Union with perhaps a visit to and a couple of talks for our own center. I had the idea of a center in uh, Berlin as long ago as uh, 92 when I came for the, the, the Congress of the European Buddhist Union. I saw even then that um, Berlin occupied a very important position, that it was not only the capital of the United or reunited Germany, but that it was also a sort of um, gateway through the countries of Eastern Europe. It was delightful to have uh, Bante here. He gave a talk at the Buddhist Center, at our place, and in the course of it, he displayed one of his, what I think his main qualities is. He didn't just be, he wasn't just being clear, he was also being extremely playful. Suppose you, know, you were to go home this evening and unfortunately find <laughs> that while you were away at the Buddhist lecture, <laughs> your house had been burned down. Uh, nehmen wir einfach mal an, so, dass wir ähm, jetzt nach Hause gehen und dann unglücklicherweise, während wir uns diesen Vortrag anhörten, ist das Haus abgebrannt. So what would you say? Was würden wir sagen? So we say, oh well, I knew it was impermanent. <lacht> würden wir sagen, naja, ich wusste ja, es war unbeständig. Yes, yes, that's what Bunty said in his lecture. Ja, das hat Bunty ja in seinem Vortrag gesagt. Yes.
Bunty was dead right. Bunty was just ganz <laughs> genau. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me whether I have any sort of special interest in, in, in Germany. Mm. And um, I think I could say that I, I always have had. It is obvious and quite noticeable that he comes and visits Germany quite a lot. So I think this is partly due to the fact he just likes the country. I personally tend to think that there's something almost Germanic about the way he speaks and writes. And, uh, it's, it's, I think it is significant that he pays many visits to this country because he sees the importance of Germany. I'm very well aware that um, Germany occupies a, a quite important place in, uh, in Europe, politically and economically, and probably it will be occupying an important place culturally too. And also, of course, will be important from the, the standpoint of of Buddhism in Europe. There's a very substantial uh, German Buddhist community you know, in, in this country.